Okay, everybody, welcome again for the Mikey. Ooh, somebody said, what's the anime fan chick hand sign? I'm like, I don't know. I'll tell you why I do this. I do this because I want to give you the peace sign, but it. Uh, I don't know where the camera is at any given time. So I know if I put it around my eye that the camera will have my face in the picture. So I know that by going like this, I'm always going to get it in the frame of whatever video or picture or whatever I'm doing. That's where this came from because it fits into the frame just for clarity. Okay. Cause some people uh, don't understand it. They're like, uh, think it's a gang sign. It's the gang sign. That's what it is. It's the OCD. It's, it's the, it's the freaking hi-fi tribe gang sign. That's what this is. I know you're, we're, we're in the same gang. If I see you guys do that. Um, anyways. Okay. So today I am going to talk, tell me by the way, if the audio got a little better and it, this is going to be cool for you guys because I'm going to stick to this this format at least for part of the videos that I do. You guys are going to see it develop. I've I've got some, dude. I've got a manly mic pre. I've got a Neumann coming in. You'll see a Neumann on a boom. It's not going to be any road ass bullshit. Um, it's going to be the real broadcast level uh, stuff. Stuff like Howard Stern and and whoever used back in the day. The real real McCoy. Um, anyways. Um, I will get to the point today, which is Teflon. What is Teflon in audio? You guys hear about it in cables. You heard me mention Teflon boards in a preamp. And, uh, you know, maybe you all don't understand what that means. Now, is it Teflon like a Teflon pan? You know, the kind that you, you cook with, you see Teflon. No, it's not metal, okay? Teflon is not a metal. Teflon is a coating inside the pan. So it is a, it's a polymer. It's plastic. Teflon equals, let's see if I can, uh, I don't think I can, I can type it in. I was going to put the letters across, but again, no editing. I'm shooting from the cuff. P-T-F-E, that is Teflon. P-T-F-E, poly, tetra, flora, ethylene, okay? That is a fluoropolymer that you use. It's uh, anti-stick in the case of pans. Um, it is highly heat resistant. Uh, it is, which is good, makes it good for things like um, military. Um, cause you use it, you can use it in F-16s, uh, or any sort of aerospace. You can use it inside a tank for communications or whatever, cause it's not going to melt. The plastic won't melt the way, uh, um, uh, PVC will. Okay. PVC is kind of like the most used, widely used dielectric. Okay. Keep that word in mind. D-I-E-L-E-C-T-R-I-C. Dielectric. A dielectric is otherwise known in layman's terms as insulator, okay? It is a, a material, a substrate in the case of a PC board or an insulator in case of outside of a wire that is a, uh, used to keep it from shorting out. It, it, it does not, it does not uh, conduct, okay? So anything that is dielectric is anything that does not conduct electricity, okay? It has dielectric properties. So uh, in uh, Hi-Fi, you're going to hear us call, talk about the dielectric called PTFE, okay, otherwise known as Teflon, otherwise known in layman's terms, Teflon insulation, okay? Uh, why do we use it? Okay, well, there is something in a dielectric. There is a specification. There are many different dielectrics. I explained to you one was PVC, one is PTFE. There's um, PEEK. There is um, um, Kapton, which I can't remember if that's P, that's not P-E-E-K, but I could go on and on. There's a whole bunch of different dielectrics. Each one of them have different properties depending on what they're used for. Some are good for chemical resistance and heat resistance. Some have extremely high voltage like Kapton. It's like thousand, uh, over a thousand volts uh, that won't arc through it. Like it's, it's high voltage. Other ones are for water, so you can run wires underneath water, and they're um, non-hygroscopic. They won't absorb any sort of, of water. Water won't mess with them. Uh, Teflon, PTFE, can go through gasoline. So if you want to wire something through a fuel tank, you can wire it, or, a, or a, a, an oil reservoir. Um, it, it's impervious to those chemicals. So each dielectric has different properties, not all of them are have to do with electrical uh, 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 performance. Many of them, as I just stated, have to do with other characteristics that make them good for other things. Um, and as long as they meet the minimum electrical requirements, they're good. 
because these other characteristics are, are, are very important. Now, in the case of hi-fi, we don't care about most of those uh, uh, characteristics. They're going to be used inside a piece of gear. It's not probably going to get more than 150 degrees max, you know, if it's by, you know, the outputs or whatever. Um, and it doesn't need chemical resistance. It doesn't need abrasion resiliency. It doesn't need a lot of that stuff. But all we care about is dielectric absorption or dielectric constant is another way to say that. Basically, what it means is how much signal, because every dielectric will absorb a little bit of the signal and re-release it back into the signal path, okay, if you will. So if you can imagine, how could I really uh, um, exemplify this? Let's say we had a paper straw and we're sucking water through that paper straw. There's going to be a certain amount. Of course, we can, we're can. we going to coat it with wax coating or something. But if it's an uncoated paper straw, we're going to drink through that a certain amount of the water. Well, it's not going to release back. Maybe that's not a good example. Okay. Just imagine the water absorbs into the straw a little bit, and then it comes back out and goes into the stream. Because imagine energy, uh, uh, like electromagnetic energy, zzz, that stuff, right? You're going to and go inside the plastic a little bit, and then it's going to come back out. If you crank that signal up, it's going to go further into the plastic and then come back out. If you go higher in frequency, especially if you start to go towards, you know, out of our hearing range and into the FM band and into even all the way up to microwave, you're getting super small, high frequency. You're going to go further into that dielectric. It's going to be easier for you to permeate that dielectric by using high frequency or by using, um, you know, a stronger signal, more voltage, in other words. Uh, and so um, when that signal goes into the plastic and comes back out, it can cause a time smearing. OK, it is. Let's just not even get into what it is. Let's just say it's loss. OK, so anytime your signal goes into the plastic, you're experiencing dielectric loss or you're experiencing signal loss in regular terms. That signal loss, as you know, is not good for hi-fi. We want to minimize loss. Why do you think there's a cable called less loss? Because it's all about minimizing loss, especially when you're using cables. And when you're using a substrate, OK, which is like instead of hand wiring everything like a PCB is just a network of wires that's stuck onto a card. OK, a substrate. You take your substrate and you have wires which are in the shape of traces and you put it on a board to make assembly much easier. Otherwise, you'd have to a person would have to be point to point wiring all those wires. You'd have to have perfect solder joints and every single thing, all that. So they put it onto a board to make it much easier. You can just drop the board in. You just put a whole wire harness in on that board and a circuit. You can also on a board, you can add resistors. You don't have to float the little resistors out in the air on the wires and all the crap you'd have to do if you didn't have that substrate. So are we better off using Teflon as a substrate in uh, Hi-Fi? Absolutely we are. Why? Because it's lower loss. Why? Because it has lower dielectric absorption. Uh, so there's less loss associated with it. So naturally, as hi-fi enthusiasts, we would go towards a Teflon board as opposed to FR4, which is typically the most widely used FR3, FR4 is a fiberglass, okay? And it's fiberglass with a, with, you have a layer of fiberglass like this, and then you have a layer of copper like this. They put the two, they sandwich it. And then many times you have what they call a multi-layer um, a multi-layer uh, PCB, which has, you know, copper, uh, uh, copper, fiberglass, copper, fiberglass. You have a whole sandwich, fiber, copper, glass, uh, copper, fiberglass, copper, fiberglass, copper, fiberglass. Then you've got a five-layer board, let's say, okay? And each time you lay down the copper, you do a etch. You do, you put acid on it. You make a, an etching uh, where the lines go, and then you wash it off. And the copper dissolves away and it remains only the traces. That's why you see all those little traces. So that's a copper, that's an etching process that makes your PC board. And then you can layer it. And then it's very important how you place those traces. You don't want 
ground you want uh, 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 traces that have higher voltage or higher current you want them away from the signal traces so you want to be very cognizant about how you route your little lines on a pc board it's extremely important and in fact the routing of the circuit routing and the layout it's called circuit layout is more important than anything in a, a design as far as i'm concerned um when you build an amplifier your circuit layout is what makes or breaks the whole design, okay? Some people don't know circuit layout. They'll put traces right across grounds, right across high, just the way you shouldn't do it. And there's just a proper way to lay out. There's an improper way to lay out. Someone like Jeff Rowland prides himself on layout and he will change layout little teeny bits and then measure and then change the layout on the, on the, on the traces and then measure again simulation process that you go through to to improve your boards in fact since i'm talking about jeff roland jeff roland uses ceramic boards okay not even teflon he goes to ceramic so when you get to ceramic now you're in nasa grade high level aerospace industry extremely high bandwidth extremely low loss pc boards okay so ceramic if we could make ceramic wires we would but they're too rigid, right? So we don't. We use PTFE or Teflon insulation on our wires because it is lower loss. Now, is that needed? Absolutely not. It's not needed. In many times, it's marketing, you know? It is better. Sure. Does it measure better? Absolutely. Is there lower loss? Yes, absolutely. Is it better? Yes, it is. But should it make or break a, 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 a design? Absolutely not. It shouldn't make or break. The preamp I showed you the other day should not be made or broken. It's a bonus or a feature, or an added feature that you use for a sales bullet point. Hey, mil spec, military spec means very high specification. Military spec, um, PTFE, uh, 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 insulated, uh, silver-plated copper. Okay, you. why do you plate copper with silver? Because silver has a higher bandwidth. Silver is a better conductor than copper. It's got other properties too that I don't want to go in from a metallurgical standpoint and heat and different things like that. But for comms wire, silver plated copper is always used, okay, in, in the military, in the aerospace industry, because it's high spec, okay? So is it needed in high fight? No, it's totally way overkill in high fight. But as you know, hi fi is all about overkill. This is what we do. Okay. And in my videos, I try and help you guys draw a line. Where is overkill too much and ridiculous? And where do we get just enough overkill that we sweeten it up and we make a real bespoke product, but we're not overcharging for it? And here we go. I'm getting another phone call. Um, so uh so that is PTFE. In, in a nutshell, that is what Teflon is. That is why we have it. People are like, well, you don't need Teflon PCBs. That's overkill. Well, of course it's overkill. It doesn't matter. But if you get it included for 7,900, then it's a huge thumbs up. Now, if you have to pay $60,000 to get your Teflon board, then no, it doesn't. Then, then it's stupid. Then we don't need it because I'd rather have FR4 and no 60 grand than FR4 and 60,000, or I mean, then than Teflon and a $60,000 price. But in the example that I brought you guys, we've got an $8,000 preamp that has PTFE boards with very thick traces. I mean, you could see the profile, the traces. Try and take a PC board and look from the side and see if you can see the profile. You'll never see it. It's perfectly flat because they're super thin ass traces. It's a thin copper cladding. If you look at the boards on the NAT audio, those were so thick we could actually visually with the naked eye see a profile of that trace sticking up off the board on the Teflon. So that, what I'm trying to point out to you, isn't that it's needed. I'm trying to point out to you how exotic it is, how much overbuilt it is for the money that you're paying. You're getting a way overbuilt design. One with traces so thick, you can look to the side and see a profile. I'm teaching you guys how to visually look inside a piece of gear and tell if it's worth the money that you're about, that you're considering paying, okay? One of those things is the traces on the board, the board substrate material will give you a level of exoticness, right? Jeff Rowland, it's freaking ceramic. In the NAT audio, it's Teflon. In all most of your stuff, it's FR4, okay? So, and then we can get into how thin is the FR4? Is it flexi? 
that isn't really that important unless your boards are going to flex. That becomes important if you put a tube socket on that board and you're pressing tubes down into it. How rigid is that board or is it thin FR4 like the Chinese stuff where you press your tube into it and it bends the FR4 down and then over time you might get stress fractures in the copper traces. This is all these are all things to consider when you look at the quality. Sure people can make things sound the people say oh other you know china can make it sound just as good for half the money or whatever and then you go yeah well look at this look at this pc board that i'm pressing you know i'm i'm putting the tube in you know and uh and 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 the board is the board is flexing okay so over time that thing's going to be toast eventually but if you get one that is like this now i put now i can't i can't flex that board it's going to last longer it's more it's it's but but those are things that are overlooked those are the little things that you guys don't really pick up you just think oh look at the price and oh look at how pretty the faceplate is i'm here to help you go inside and 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 tell the differences between good shit and 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 regular shit and cheap shit right so anyways hope you enjoyed it i ran a little long on this one for 15 minutes sorry to take up your time hope you guys have an awesome day thanks for joining here's my little gay ass little anime thing whatever you want to call it um but yes okay so thanks for joining see you